what uh, what this guy did. There's a, you know what a table saw is? Let me show you. Table saw. Designed for cutting straight lines in wood, cutting wood in straight. So there's a blade that sticks up here, and it has teeth on it like this. Right? I'm not drawing it all the way around anyway. Circular, as you, is obvious from my drawing. OK, it's got these teeth on it, and it spins 3,000 RPM, something like that. And you feed your piece of wood in this way, and it cuts nice straight lines. It's, uh, sometimes it can be dangerous. Uh, there's a, a fence that runs on one side, and you have your wood pressed up against the fence, and you feed it through. Sometimes the wood binds between the blade and the fence, and it kicks back. and so. Uh, so, you know, it can, it can do some damage. This, uh, this person, uh, I actually, I went to grad school with this guy. <laughs> he got his PhD in physics, then he became a patent attorney. He is also an avid woodworker. He thought, how can you make a table saw safer? Well, you can almost immediately rule out any kind of proximity sensor, right? If, a, if the, there's a sensor that senses your hand going into the blade and shuts off the blade, that's not going to work because the wood has to go into the blade, right? So he thought, what if we could put an electrical signal on the blade and monitor that? Because wood is a poor conductor, right? It's not going to affect the electrical signal. But the human body, we, I think we tested our resistance in here, right, the first day. It's something, it's not a very good conductor, right, but it is a conductor. It's a mega ohms, right? Your resistance was probably in the mega ohms. So you conduct a little bit. So if there's an electrical signal on that blade, if your hand goes into the blade, you might be able to detect that. So let me show you. That was the first part. That was the first part that, uh, let me see. So this is the potential. It maintains some constant electrical potential on the blade. If your hand touches it, it drops. The potential goes down because that electrical signal is, is being spread over a much larger area, kind of, right? It's, uh, it drops the, the potential. Look at the kind of resolution he has. The potential drops. Then it goes up. Then it comes down again. You know why it goes up right there? It's in between the blades. So look, you see these teeth? There's about 40 of those, at least 40, maybe more, maybe 80 on a good saw blade. Somewhere between 40 and 80 of these teeth around a 10 or 12 inch diameter. They're, they're not very far apart, right? And it's spinning at 3,000 RPM. And the first tooth, the first little tooth on the saw hits your finger and the potential starts to drop and then for a split second nothing is touching your finger and the potential starts to go back up and then the next second tooth hits your finger and the potential goes back down and that's the kind of resolution they've got on the on the potential signal there it comes down oh for a split second Nothing's touching your finger, and then the second tooth makes contact. I mean, that's, that's impressive. OK, now he's got a technique for figuring out when your finger's touching the blade. Now he's got to stop a blade that's rotating 3,000 RPM. Let's see how he does that. Oh, sorry, hold on. Designed this saw to be the safest table. Sound, I need sound. We designed this saw to be the safest table saw ever built. I think of it like seat belts or an airbag for table saws. The mechanism is very sophisticated, but the technology behind it's actually quite simple. The blade carries a small electrical charge. This charge is continuously monitored by a digital signal processor. When contact is made, the human body absorbs some of the charge, causing the voltage to drop. The drop in voltage triggers a quick-release aluminum brake. 
A heavy-duty spring forces the brake into the teeth of the spinning blade. The teeth dig into the aluminum, stopping the blade cold. The blade's momentum forces it to retract below the table, and the motor is automatically shut off. Hot, let's watch the hot dog demo. Look at that, just a nick. I mean, that's impressive. Where did the blade go? Why did it do that? A little review from last quarter. That blade is spinning 3,000 RPM. What's it got? A lot of angular momentum. He stops it from spinning in a couple of thousandths of a second. So that creates a lot of torque on the, the saw. So how do you dissipate that? Well, when the blade, stop, the blade is spinning and it's on, it's on an arm that can articulate. So the blade's spinning. It has a lot of angular momentum. If the blade stops spinning, the whole arm can swing down and maintain some of that angular momentum. So it's a little easier on the saw. Instead of stopping it cold, it stops the saw, the arm swings down, then it stops that. It makes it a little easier on the, on the mechanics of the saw spreading out the angular momentum a little bit. So it's conservation of angular momentum. When that blade stops spinning, the whole arm wants to spin to, to maintain its angular momentum. Okay, interesting application and uh, incredibly impressive <laughs> that you can, you know, I mean, you might get discouraged, right, thinking that this is just a task that is, is not solvable, right, but, but he stuck with it and came up with a really interesting solution and not, not, uh, not so complicated that he couldn't make it work, right, it's, uh, it works, he saved, uh, He's got on his website, you can see all kinds of people sending pictures of you know, limbs that have been saved by, <laughs> by this. Because you're talking about the difference between you know, uh, a lot of surgery trying to reattach <laughs> the digits versus uh, a Band-Aid, right? a, a nick. It's, it's impressive. It's, he's, um, he's doing okay. I mean, I, the comment I, I got from him was I, I made a lot more money as a uh, patent attorney. <laughs> but um, it, there are different stories. It's actually an interesting story. He, he didn't want to get into the table saw business, he says. He wanted to license this technology to companies that already made table saws. He claims they weren't interested. They claim he didn't really have a mature product. He came to them with some little you know, makeshift demonstration and that it wasn't really ready. Um, who knows? Uh, so he, he started his own company. They make a nice table saw. Um, uh, it's available for home use. It's available for schools and things. It's not outrageously. It's a, t a little bit more than other table saws, but not outrageously priced, especially for a school. Or, or you know, you might think that... Um, that a professional, you know, someone who's working on tables all the time would be more careful than someone who uses it once every six months in their garage. But, but the guy who uses it all the time has the greatest chance of getting injured. Right? It's like where do most car accidents happen? Within two miles of your house, right? Because that's where you do most of your driving. So the chances of having an accident are greater there. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, I think he's doing okay. Yeah. Look him up. <laughs> Saw stop. Okay, kind of a cool application. Hot dog demo, you saw it here. Okay, so, uh, so anyway, inside the body, action potentials, EKGs, all those things, and, uh, and then other, other applications. And then where we're really going to see it is in circuits. Okay. <clears throat>